Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Dr. Ford's assaulters just came forward. Neither one is Brett Kavanaugh. Two men have come forward to members of the Senate Judiciary Committee to claim that they are the ones who actually assaulted Christine Blasey Ford during a House party in 1982, and not Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Republicans on the committee released a timeline of events late Wednesday, which included details about their interactions with the two men who admitted to the attacks. On Monday, the timeline recounts GOP staff members interviewing a man who believes he, not Judge Kavanaugh, had the encounter with Dr. Ford in 1982. The encounter refers to an episode in which Ford claims that Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her in a bedroom at a Maryland House party. They had a follow-up interview with that man, and he provided more detail about the assault. Then on Wednesday, the committee staff said they spoke with a second man who said he assaulted Ford in 1982. The committee did not release any more details about the men, or why both were coming forward with the claims. Right-wing news further reported in the polygraph examination. Attorneys for Christine Blasey Ford have released results from a polygraph test she took last month which she apparently passed, except there is just one huge problem. The narrative that the left has utilized to the fullest in their desperate attempts to stop Judge Brett Kavanaugh from being confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States is falling apart. In a story chock full of inconsistencies, Blasey Ford is the first woman to accuse Kavanaugh of drunkenly groping her at a party after pushing her into a bedroom and covering her mouth with his hand to prevent her from screaming at a high school party when he was just 17 years old. She was 15 years old. She thinks. She is not entirely sure of when exactly these events occurred but claims sometime in the 1980s. She has been largely unable to produce any sort of credible and solid evidence to back up her very serious accusations against Kavanaugh. One of the points in her favor according to Democrats in opposition to Kavanaugh's confirmation is that Blasey Ford took a lie detector or polygraph test which has been widely reported by the mainstream media as credible evidence to demonstrate she was not lying. The Washington Post reported that Blasey Ford sat for a test on August 7, 2018, on the advice of her attorney, who believed Ford would be attacked as a liar if she came forward. The results concluded that Ford was being truthful when she said a statement summarizing her allegations was accurate, the paper reported, adding that the polygraph was administered by a former FBI agent. Questions have arisen since the polygraph test was administered just one week after her letter to Senator Dianne Feinstein, DCA. Many have wondered just how exactly Blasey Ford traveled from California to Maryland and back again since she cited fear of flying as one reason to not testify before the Judiciary Committee. This prompted Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, Arya, to offer to come to her instead. That offer was declined. Now the actual details concerning the polygraph test have been released to the public and it makes her already flimsy story outright collapse. The biggest problem with the so-called lie detector results is that the examiner never actually asked questions about Kavanaugh during the polygraph test. At all. The examiner conducting the polygraph simply had Blasey Ford scribble down her nearly 40-year-old memory of the drunken party. She was then asked two vague questions of the events which were simply, is any part of your statement false? And did you make up any part of your statement? It is vitally important to understand Kavanaugh's name was literally never brought up in the interview. Instead, Blasey Ford was asked if she believed her own handwritten account of the events that transpired. The name Kavanaugh appears nowhere in that written statement either. The Daily Caller reports. In her handwritten statement included in her polygraph, Ford claims that there were four boys and a couple of girls at the party. Ford's claim that there were four boys and a couple of girls at the party contradicts Ford and her lawyer's other accounts of how many people were present. In her letter to Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein, Ford claimed that there were four others present. She also told The Washington Post that there were four boys at the party and two, Kavanaugh and his friend, Mark Judge, in the room where the assault allegedly occurred. Ford's lawyer, Deborah Katz, later told CNN that there were four guys and one other girl at the party. She says that there were four guys there, these are high school students, as was she. There were four guys there. Were there any girls there that day? CNN anchor Allison Camerata asked Katz on September 17. Yes, there was another girl at this party, Katz replied. Since Ford's allegations were first made public, there have been three different accounts of how many people were at the party she claims to have been assaulted at, four boys four boys and one girl, and four boys and a couple of girls. Kavanaugh, Judge and two other alleged party attendees all say they do not recall the party in question or any assault. In addition, 
The credibility of using a polygraph exam as proof is questionable at best as many critics of the test claim polygraphs to be worthless. The Daily Beast reports. While law enforcement and national security agencies employ the so-called lie detector as a tool for investigations and employment checks, it is rarely used as evidence in court. And the 2005 Federal Violence Against Women Act stipulated that any state that requires victims of a sexual offense to take an exam would be ineligible for certain grants. Nevertheless, the polygraph has figured in several recent high-profile sexual misconduct cases. Porn star Stormy Daniels released one she took as a requirement for a magazine story about her alleged affair with President Trump. And former Senate candidate Roy Moore claimed he took one that showed allegations against him were false. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.